Hey, what up overclockers? Blue Devil here. What I have here is the EVGA RTX 2060 Super SC Ultra. Today we're going to take a look at how this guy performs to what I have on here in the studio, which happens to be the GTX 1070 Ti Amp Edition and the AMD Radeon RX Vega 64. Unfortunately, Overclock did not get a sample of AMD's Navi GPUs to compare against the new Super GPUs. Maybe soon, AMD? So at the beginning of July, much to everyone's surprise, Nvidia tried to steal AMD's thunder from the RX 5700 and RX 5700 XT launch. Nvidia calls it Super, the RTX 2060 Super, 2070 Super, and 2080 Super, which in terms of differences to last year's RTX 2060 is a bump in shaders from 1920 to 2176, resulting in a little over 13% increase in shader count. Still running on the TU-106 core, ROPS increased from 48 to 64, a 33% increase, and GDR6 memory is up from 6 gigabytes to 8 gigabytes. Clocks are also up. This guy sports a GPU boost clock of 1680 megahertz and the memory gets cranked up to 14 gigabits per second on the 256 bit bus, up from a 192 bit bus. Pricing is also up from last year's RTX 2060 from 340 US dollars to 400 US dollars. In terms of aesthetics, much of the same from EVJ's own RTX 2060 SC Ultra is the same. I really can't blame them for not wanting to reinvent a new cooling solution or PCB. Also, EVJ really hasn't been a big player in terms of RGB on GPUs. Yes, some have it, but it's not all over the top. This RTX 2060 Super SC Ultra doesn't have them their fancy RGB. Instead, just two hydraulic dynamic bearing fans aid in the ICX2 cooling, which a cool thing about those little fans, the little E's throughout, is supposed to aid in noise reduction as well as airflow. Also, the shroud is black plastic, but has a metallic look to it. Moving over to the I.O. section of the EVGA RTX 2060 Super SC Ultra are two DisplayPort 1.4 ports, one HDMI 2.0, and a single DVI-D port. Flipping the SC Ultra to the top and you're greeted with a generous heatsink spread throughout the majority of the length of the PCB. And then some. Ladies? On the end, or should I say three quarters the way down the length, is a single 8-pin PCIe power connector. So only a single 8-pin PCIe power connector is needed to power it. So the max power draw is up to 225 watts. So when you say we stop talking about the RTX 2060 Super SE Ultra from EVGA and get it on the test bench and see what it can really do. Just note all GPU testing will be done with three resolutions in mind. 3440 by 1440, 2560 by 1080, and 1920 by 1080. Why those three? I run an ultra-wide 3440 by 1440p monitor and quite frankly 4k is too taxing on a gpu to really flex this fps i like a combination of fps and quality i thought you all would agree with that let's roll them benchmarks the test bench system is an Intel Core i7-8700K clocked at 5 GHz, an ASUS Z370 Maximus X Code motherboard, 16 GB of DDR4-3200 Vulkan Z Team Group memory is in place, an Intel 256GB 760P PCIe NVMe SSD, also is a T4 Vulkan 500GB 2.5 inch SSD for games, an EVGA P2 750W with an EVGA cable set, Entermax Lictec 2 280mm AIO running Windows 10 64-bit 1903 on the Acer 34 inch ultra wide 3440 by 1440 at 100 hertz, all on a Lan Lee T70X custom.
That was a lot of data, believe me. The EVGA RTX 2060 Super SC Ultra is, well, pretty awesome. Not only does it really perform good, it's silent at idle, mainly due to the fans not spinning at all, and it's whisper quiet at full load. But I want a little more from this guy. So how well does it overclock? So starting off with EVGA's own Precision X1 software to overclock the SC Ultra even further, at first I tried the tried and true method, maxing the power and temp target, I started with 100 megahertz overclock, then 120 which netted me just above two gigahertz while running the Division 2 at 3440 by 1440. I figured I would see if the VF curve tuner that's built into the X1 software could do some of the dirty work for me, so I let it work its magic. Well, to my surprise, X1 found an overclock of plus 121 megahertz. Not bad, not bad at all. Next, I cranked up the memory to plus 250 megahertz. Backing off the overclock a little bit, I found that my max stable overclock was a plus 100 on the core and 400 on the memory. Again, not bad at all. Now with the SC Ultra now sitting around two gigahertz on the core and 14.8 gigabits per second on the GDR6 memory, the best part of all, the core never got hotter than 63 degrees Celsius. To test the overclock, I ran Division 2 again at 3440 by 1440, knowing the Division 2 is not an easy game to run on direct X12. I thought the overclock did a great job at increasing the average frame rate to more than 20 FPS more than stock. So in conclusion, the EVGA RTX 2060 Super SC Ultra is a really nice 60 series graphics card. For a price point of around 420, it's certainly going to trade blows with the slightly cheaper AMD Radeon RX 5700 XT. Even in the previous generations like the Vega 64 and the GTX 1070, the 2060 SC Ultra bests them before overclocking. With that said, 4.5 out of 5 flames from me only due to pricing. If this was say $389 for sure would get 5 out of 5. But then again you do get a much better heat design for the $20 difference in pricing. Well guys, if you haven't liked and subscribed by now, you all know what to do. I will see you guys in the next one.